Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I did pop up a community post a couple of days ago to let everyone know that at the moment um, I won't be going live. Unfortunately, I believe that my dog Bella, who has terminal cancer, I believe that we only have a few days or a week left with her, so I'm focusing my time and attention on her. But I want to still pop up some quick edited videos of updates in cases that we are following so that we still um, are aware of the latest. So today we're going to discuss a couple of case updates that we've had overnight. Today we got some more information about the sad case of the murder of six-year-old Faye Swetlick. There was a press conference earlier that actually identified the male who is associated with this case. They're not actually saying that he committed homicide against little Faye, but they're saying that um, their cases are connected. Uh, so let's have a little listen to the press conference. It's about 10 minutes long, so grab a snack before you, um, you settle in and you can also skip ahead if you've already seen it. Uh, it goes for about 10 minutes. Safety. I'd like to welcome you here and thank you for your patience. In the beginning, we promised you daily case updates and that's what we're here to do today. Before we get into this too far, I want everyone to continue to pray for Faye Swetlick. This has been a horrible situation for our community and for our department. We want to thank you for your patience with us as a department. Yesterday was a tough day, possibly the toughest day of many law enforcement careers. Some of you have requested 911 audio from the initial report when Faye went missing. I'm happy to say that we have that for you this morning. They have been redacting personal information over the last few hours, and we will have that out to you within a few short minutes at the end of this press conference. Yesterday, you saw our investigators and agents with SLED and the Federal Bureau of Investigation following City of Casey municipal sanitation trucks through the neighborhood of Churchill Heights. What we were doing was emptying trash cans and looking to see what came out before it was entered into the truck. As part of that search, we located a critical item of evidence related to our investigation of bringing Faye Swetlick home. Based on that discovery, we narrowed down an area that we felt as an investigative team that we needed to go back to and look for more evidence. Director Snellgrove and other leaders were in the area planning a, a methodical, a, a, another methodical search of that area. Even though we had been there multiple times, we were going back during the early planning stages of that search. Director Byron Snellgrove with KCDPS located the body of Faye Marie Swetlick. What we can tell you is this, based on our investigation and based on the information, the preliminary information that we received from the coroner's office, we believe that Faye had not been in that location for a very long time at all. A short time later, just moments after locating Faye Marie Swetlick, we located a deceased male at 602 Piccadilly Square. What I'd like to do now is allow Lexington County Coroner Margaret Fisher to step up to make ID on that person. 
Hey, everybody. First, I want to say thank you. Thank you for covering this case so diligently. And thank you for your patience in allowing my office and all the other law enforcement agencies to to handle business and to get the information we need. And you guys have been so patient with waiting on all of our news releases. So we really do appreciate that. Um, I'm here to identify the uh, male that was found on the scene. Um, so I'll spell his name. It's going to be a Caucasian male. He's 30 years old. His first name is Cody, C-O-T-Y. Middle name is Scott, S-C-O-T-T. -T. Last name is Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R. Um, he did reside at 602 Piccadilly Square. And as you know, the autopsy for him will probably be on Saturday as well. And we won't know any information on the cause of death until after the autopsy is completed. And it, at that time, we'll, I'm sure we'll do another news release and give you that information. But it's going to be Saturday, um, probably by Saturday afternoon, we'll know more about, about him. Okay? Thank you. What about the autopsy? No, I'm, I've got more to give you. Okay. So there are a lot of questions out there. What I can tell you is this. The male body that was just identified as Cody Taylor was our evidence and our investigation does link these two together. I can confirm that he was a neighbor, that he was not a relative, he was not a friend, he was merely a neighbor in, that lived in Churchill Heights. At this time, I want to assure you, our community, and all of our parents out there, that there is no, we have no reason to believe that there is an active threat in the Churchill Heights community or the city of Casey as a whole. We have no suspects at this time. We have made no arrest, and we are not seeking any persons of interest as of this time. Lastly, I want to say this. Again, this has been a tragic situation for our community, <coughs> for our department, and for everyone who has been following the story of Faye Marie Swetland. We want to thank the community for their tips. Without them, we may not be where we are. We want to thank that neighborhood. We went in there and turned their lives upside down. We made them late for work, we searched their homes, and we invaded their privacy. But we did it for a reason, and we had a goal. This is not the outcome we wanted, but this is where we are, and our work continues to bring justice for Faye Marie Sweatlet. I do have time for questions. There are some things about this investigation that I'm not going to be able to tell you about. But I do have time for questions and we can take those now. Yes, sir, in the can back. Can you say if they were, where they were both found and if they were both found inside his residence and if so, where? I can answer that for you. So, Faye Marie Sweatlet, her body was located in a wooded area between her residence and the Napa Auto Parts where we did our briefings earlier in the week. The body of Cody Taylor was located at his residence. I'm not going to get into specifics, but it was, it was at his residence. Yes, ma'am. Since there is no pending investigation with further criminal charges, um, are you able to detail the piece of evidence that you found by uh, going behind the trash truck. So I just, I want to clarify, we do still have an open investigation that right now, what we, what we are looking at is just what I gave you. Um, but, but just because we don't have any suspects now, we want to make sure that there's not anyone else involved 
in the disappearance of Faye Marie Swetlick. So I, I can't. I can tell you it was a critical piece of evidence. And what I will confirm is this. It was a critical piece of evidence that would have been listed on her missing persons flyer. Next question. Do you believe that Cody killed Faye? I know the investigation is very preliminary. Yeah. Say I, that? I, I, I can't comment on that on their investigation. Again, I, what I will tell you is they are linked. Can you, can you uh, tell us where the evidence is found at all? Yes, in a trash can belonging to 602 Piccadilly Square, which is the residence of Cody Taylor. In the back. How close is his house to her house? 100 to 150 feet. So all, all in that area, there is Londonderry Square and Piccadilly Square. It's some small, uh, similar to townhomes that are right next to one another, and they once and they're right i mean those two lanes are right next to each other yes sir did cody taylor have a criminal record or was known to kcbcs he has no criminal history and he was not known to law enforcement down here uh, i'm wondering if you could tell me whether you believe his to also be a homicide and if you have a date of birth for him yes so we're I'm not going to stand up here and speculate on his cause of death at this time. We're going to wait to cooperate with the forensic pathologist before we say anything about that. I do have a date of birth for him. It is 3-9 of 1989. Like I said, we'll know more about his cause of death tomorrow. Sergeant Anthony, can you talk about, uh, you, you all knocked on doors, you searched homes. Had you searched Mr. Taylor's home before you found, or before law enforcement found him? We had talked to Mr. Taylor. We had been inside his home. Absolutely, we had. Yes. Was the body of Faye buried, or was it just like in a commercial? I'm not going to comment on the condition of her body. That's. I appreciate your question, but I, I feel like if I asked, it'd be insensitive at this time. Right here, yes, ma'am. Is uh, you're, you're saying that there's a definitive link? Is it uh, DNA? N what I'm telling you is, is that part of our invest that evidence in our investigation links these two. They are not, it's not Faye and then a totally separate case. They are linked. But you can't tell us that. I, I can't, I'm not going to give you the specific details on how. I don't want to. Um, we're still, what I can ask you for is this. We want more information about Cody Taylor starting at 344 Monday afternoon up until the time that we, um, announced that we had found his body. The time for one more than these guys. Can you tell us how the family has been so far? How, how are they holding up and everything? You know, I, unfortunately, I personally have not talked to them. But what I can tell you is this, is that we have victim specialists with them. My heart breaks for that family. As a parent, how do you go through that? We have a preschool not too far from here, and kids are out there playing on the playground as we pulled in. And as officers, we stopped and waved and made sure those kids saw us and smiled. I, I couldn't begin to answer that. Thank you so much. We will continue pushing out information. Follow Casey Public Safety's Facebook page. We will continue to get you this information as it becomes available and as our investigation allows. Thank you so much for being here. So as you can see on the map, they were just so close. They were, their house, their homes sort of backed off of each other, um, just so extraordinarily close. So um, he was a neighbor and here's a photo of him on screen. So he has passed and uh, we will hear more, I think tomorrow about his cause of death. Police did ask us to keep Faye in our in our thoughts and prayers and of course her family and that's exactly what we're going to do um, for this sweet little girl and her poor family and uh, again I'll update you when we know more. Moving on to another case the Australian case here of the uh, suspected grinder killing we now do have an identification of the, the 56 year old male who was found um, near the Brulee area. Um, his name is Peter Keeley and sadly he's a father of three which is just heartbreaking. 
um, apparently he was a real estate agent and, and um, he'd spoken to some people on Grindr uh, and shockingly we have discovered that he spoke to a teenager and three teenagers have been arrested in this case. I've actually got the video from New South Wales Police to show you of them being arrested. So let's take a look. So two 17 year old boys were arrested in connection with um, Mr. Keeley's death and charged with murder as well as detaining in company with intent to get advantage occasioning actual bodily harm and then later in the day um, a third 17 year old was arrested and charged with the same thing. Now all three 17 year olds, one of them still at school, um, have been denied bail. Uh, and the police are currently investigating uh, whether this is a hate crime or not. So I will let you know more on that when we have more information. Uh, Mr. Killy's family have come out and said how devastated they are and um, how deeply they're being affect affected by this tragedy and asking for some privacy during this time. Um, so my heart, my thoughts and my prayers are with his family. Uh, and I will let you know as soon as we know more information. So we have a little update in the Mark Latonsky case. Mark Latonsky is charged with the murder of Kevin Bacon uh, and it's a case I've been covering closely on this channel um, and we have a Facebook group for it as well, Justice for Kevin Bacon of Michigan. The link will be in the description. Um, News 10 have actually spoken with Latunsky's lawyer and he has said that the evaluation of Mark Latunsky has been completed at the Forensic Centre um, and at the moment they're pulling his history, his current history, um, to look at his mental state. His public defender, um, Douglas Corwin, has said that he believes that um, Latunsky's mental state has gotten worse so that was interesting to hear as well um, so we should know maybe soon about whether Latunsky will be um, deemed competent to stand trial if not I believe what happens is he gets hospitalized and has reviews every so often of his mental state um, and then I do believe that if after 15 months he hasn't shown any signs of improvement with his mental health, they actually make a decision uh, on what is best to do for him in regards to maybe having him in a lockdown facility for a set number of time to see if they can, um, what's the right word, to see if they can stabilise him. Um, so that's a little bit of new information we also learnt that he no longer has a letterbox there that was big news at his home and that uh, we did know that his home was being foreclosed and it will go up for auction on February 26 there won't be a public viewing of the house before the auction so um, 
If we find out any more information, of course, as always, I will bring it to you. I do want to know in the comments down below, I'm interested, would you buy a home knowing that a very recent, we're talking two months recent murder took place in the home? Um, I'm interested to know what other people think. For me, I couldn't. I just couldn't um, but I know that for some people that's not really an issue so let me know in the comments down below moving on to the case of missing Gannon Stout uh, he was last seen on January 27th of this year at uh, well what time I I'm not sure we really know anymore um, but in relation to what's new in his case um, there isn't a whole bunch that's new all we know really is that they're continuing to search um, that they're really really working hard to try and bring him home um, as of today they had over 80 people in a search on Thursday and then Friday um, and they were searching through Douglas County um, then investigators aren't really telling us much anymore i suppose i do believe that it's because this case has gotten a lot of media attention a lot of social media attention and so they're trying to keep the integrity of the of the case um and and make sure that they're not jeopardizing anything with the case which is totally understandable but all we really know is that they're continuing to search as much as they possibly can um, to try and bring Gannon home as always if if anything else comes out um, that up to date and is important I will let you know um, I haven't heard any more information from my source uh, I do believe that everyone close to the case now is being very tight-lipped um, which is totally understandable let's just hope that Gannon comes home very soon so there are some case updates um, to get you up to date with what's going on. Um, I will come back on when there's enough to do another little update video. But for now I'm just loving on Bella and, um, and enjoying our final time together. She's having a better day so far so that's positive. Until next time, bye for now.